Hello friends, welcome to Health Vizac, Medical Concepts Simplified. In this video, we will learn about ECG reporting. ECG reporting is an art that can be mastered by analyzing as many ECGs as possible. To understand the ECG basics, please click on the i button at the top of the screen or click the link given in the description box. For sake of simplicity, I have made a mnemonic to remember steps for ECG reporting called as CRAWL. In this, C stands for calibration, R stands for rate, second R stands for rhythm, A stands for axis, WL stands for waveform and the respective lens that is duration in milliseconds. Calibration or standardization are set of parameters that should be checked as soon as we hold the ECG in hand. They are as follows. Voltage of ECG should be 10 mm or 1 millivolt that corresponds to two big squares or 10 small squares of ECG. Speed of the paper should be 25 mm per second. L1 is usually upright or towards the positive side whereas AVR is downward or towards the negative side but this may be inverted in case of dextrocardia. Rate of a regular rhythm ECG is calculated with the help of formula called 300 divided by number of big squares between two consecutive R waves. For an irregular ECG rhythm like atrial fibrillation, heart rate is calculated by formula called number of R waves in 30 big squares that corresponds to 6 seconds time interval and it should be multiplied by value of 10. Rhythm of the ECG is called sinus if P waves are present before every QRS complex. Axis Normal ECG axis is between minus 30 degrees to plus 100 degrees. Axis deviation between minus 30 degrees to minus 90 degrees is labeled as left axis deviation whereas axis deviation between plus 100 degrees to plus 180 degrees is labeled as right axis deviation. Anything outside this value is labeled as extreme axis deviation. Axis deviation is usually calculated by quadrant method in which net QRS complex of lead 1 and AVL is plotted on a graph paper. If net QRS complex in lead 1 and AVF are positive, then ECG falls under the normal axis quadrant. If net QRS complex is positive in lead 1 and negative in AVF, then ECG falls under the left axis deviation quadrant. If net QRS complex is negative in lead 1 and positive in AVF, then ECG falls under the quadrant of right axis deviation. It can be remembered by mnemonic called left leaves and right reaches. One more method is by calculating R wave by S wave ratio. If S wave is more than R wave in lead 1, then it's labeled as right axis deviation. Whereas if S wave is more than R wave in lead 2, then it's labeled as left axis deviation. Let's now look at the individual waveforms. P wave. P wave represents atrial contraction and has a duration of less than 120 milliseconds or less than 3 small squares and height of less than 2.5 small squares. If P waves are present and the heart rate is between 60 to 100 per minute, then the ECG is labeled as normal sinus rhythm. If P waves are present and heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute, then the ECG is labeled as sinus bradycardia. When P waves are present and heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute, then ECG is labeled as sinus tachycardia. If P waves are absent and the rhythm is regular, then ECG is labeled as junctional rhythm ECG. If P waves are absent and rhythm is irregularly irregular, then ECG is labeled as atrial fibrillation. If multiple P waves are present before each QRS complex, giving ECG a sawtooth like pattern, then ECG is labeled as atrial flutter. If P waves are bifid, then ECG is labeled as P mitral. If P waves are of magnitude more than 2.5 small squares, then it's called as P pulmonal. If P waves are present but morphologically different than the normal P waves, then ECG is labeled as ectopic atrial rhythm. If more than three different P waves morphology are present in an ECG, then the ECG is labeled as multifocal atrial tachycardia. Next is PR interval. PR interval represents the time interval between atrial and ventricular contraction phase. Its duration is usually between 120 to 200 milliseconds. If PR interval is more than 200 milliseconds, then ECG is labeled as first degree heart block. If 
PN interval is gradually increasing followed by one drop beat then ECG is labeled as second degree heart block Mobitz type 1. It is also called as Wenke Bach's phenomenon. If PN interval is more than 200 milliseconds and is constant followed by one drop P wave then ECG is labeled as second degree heart block Mobitz type 2. If P wave and QRS complex are independent of each other then ECG is labeled as third degree heart block. If PR interval is less than 120 milliseconds with the presence of delta wave then ECG is labeled as WPW pattern or Wolf Parkinson Wolf syndrome. QRS complex represents ventricular contraction and has a duration of less than 120 milliseconds or less than three small squares. If V1 and V2 is showing RSR dash pattern and the duration of QRS complex is less than 120 milliseconds, then it's labeled as incomplete right bundle branch block. And if the duration of QRS complex is more than 120 milliseconds, then it's labeled as complete right bundle branch block. If M pattern is present in V5 and V6 and the duration of QRS complex is more than 120 milliseconds, then it's labeled as left bundle branch block. If ECG is showing small R wave and deep S wave in lead 2, lead 3 and ABF with presence of left axis deviation and slightly prolonged QRS complex, then ECG is labeled as left anterior hemi block or left anterior fascicular block. If ECG is showing small Q wave and tall R waves in lead 2, lead 3 and AVF with presence of right axis deviation and slightly prolonged QRS complex, then it's labeled as left posterior fascicular block. If ECG is showing LBBB or RBBB with presence of left anterior hemi block or left posterior hemi block, then it's labeled as bifascicular block. If morphology of QRS complex is unchanged but the duration is more than 120 milliseconds, then it's labeled as interventricular conduction delay. LVH or left ventricular hypertrophy can be diagnosed by two criteria. In first, if the sum of S wave in V1 and R wave in V5 or V6 is more than 35 mm and the age of patient is more than 45 years, then it's labeled as left ventricular hypertrophy by voltage criteria or by sokolov lyons criteria. In second, the sum of R wave in AVL and S wave in V3 is more than 20 mm in females or more than 28 mm in males then it's labeled as left ventricular hypertrophy by Cornell's criteria. If ECG is showing polymorphic or monomorphic broad QRS complex of duration more than 120 milliseconds and heart rate is more than 200 per minute, then ECG is labeled as ventricular tachycardia. If polymorphic ECG waveforms are present with no identifiable P wave and QRS complex with heart rate of approximate 150 to 300 per minute, then ECG is labeled as ventricular fibrillation. If ECG is showing narrow QRS complex of duration less than 120 milliseconds with heart rate of 150 to 200 per minute such that P waves and T waves are merged together and the rhythm is regular then the ECG is labeled as supraventricular tachycardia. Next comes the ST segment. ST segment represents time interval between ventricular contraction and relaxation and has a duration of approximately 80 milliseconds. ST segment elevation or depression of more than 0.2 millivolts in males and more than 0.15 millivolts in female is significant and is labeled as ST elevation or non-ST elevation MI. Depending on the ST segment changes in various leads combination, we can identify the site of myocardial injury and it's as follows. If the changes are present in lead 1, AVL, V5 and V6, then it's labeled as lateral wall ischemia. If the changes are present in V1 and V2, then it's labeled as septal wall MI. If the changes are present in V3 and V4, then it's labeled as anterior wall MI. If the changes are present in lead 2, lead 3 and AVF, then it's labeled as inferior wall MI. Next comes the T waves. T waves represents ventricular relaxation and usually have duration of 0.25 seconds and height of less than 5 small square with a positive deflection. Tall pinch T waves represents hyperkalemia whereas if the T waves are inverted then it is suspected of myocardial ischemia. Next comes the QT interval. QT interval represents entire ventricular contraction phase starting from impulse activation to recovery. 
and has a duration of 450 milliseconds in males and 460 milliseconds in females. Although there are a lot of methods to calculate the corrected QTC, one of the most accurate method is by Framingham formula, which is corrected QTC is equal to QT interval in milliseconds plus 0.154 multiplied by 1000 minus RR interval in milliseconds. Increased QTC increases the risk of torsades de pointes. It is prolonged in conditions like electrolyte abnormalities like hypocalcemia, hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia. QTC prolongation may be associated with drugs like antimalarials or it may be congenital in nature. QTC interval is short in conditions like hypercalcemia. So friends, this brings us to the end of this topic. Hope you find this information valuable and applicable in your clinical practice. Please do like, share this video and hit the bell icon for latest updates. Do check our Facebook and Instagram handle for more clinical insights. And for more such informational videos on medical topics, please subscribe to YouTube channel Health Medical Concepts Simplified. Thank you.